Alright, so hi guys. So some of the front of the sketchbook gets cut off, but that's okay. So in today's video, I was going to do a haul of all the supplies that I'm going to be using for Inktober. Because if you don't know, Inktober is like a thing that started with Jake Paul. And it's like where you do a drawing with ink, ballpoint pen, anything that has ink in it. Markers, anything with ink in it. Um, and then you make it a drawing. Um, like this, I did this all with ink. Yeah, like that, basically. Um, if you want to see the stuff in this sketchbook, you can go to my sketchbook playlist. Um, I have a sketchbook tour of this sketchbook for Inktober. I'll either link to that in the description or somewhere. I'll link to that probably in the card up above if I remember. But I have that on my account. And yeah, I'm going to be using this sketchbook again for Inktober this year because if you not if you look, I have like like if you look, I have like a bunch of blank pages in the back of the sketchbook that I thought I should fill up, and I just didn't want to go out and buy another sketchbook when this one worked really well last year for Inktober. So yeah, and then when I'm done with Inktober, hopefully I'll fill up the whole sketchbook. If I am able to do Inktober every day, I'll hopefully fill up the sketchbook, because I counted I have exactly enough pages to do it this year, with like maybe two extra pages, and then I, you know, next year I'll have to go buy either another one of these or whatever. I don't know what brand this sketchbook is, but I do know that I got it at Barnes & Noble. So if you like go to Barnes & Noble and you see like a black sketchbook that looks like this, but all black, it's just that sketchbook. And the paper in it's really thick, so that's why I'm using it, because it only bleeds through to like the other side. Like, see, it bleeds through like this, but it doesn't bleed through any more than to the other side of the page. So, that's why it's really nice, thick paper. It's not bleed proof, but it doesn't bleed as much, so it's good. And yeah. Now, the next thing I want to show you is everything that is in this giant bag. There are like a bunch of inking supplies in this bag, so I'm just going to go really fast. But I wanted to have like a bag, and I'm like, oh, I have so many inking supplies lying around my room in different um, containers and stuff on my desk and on other places in my room. I don't want to have to search for six hours to find that inking supply that I'm looking for for Inktober. So I'm just going to go through all my inking supplies and shove all the ones that I could potentially use into a bag for Inktober. And yeah, the only rule that I set myself this year for Inktober, well, there are two rules that I set myself. One is that I'm going to do the official Jake Parker prompt list thing. I might maybe insert that here somewhere. And if I don't insert it, you can just find it probably on my Instagram or on other people's Instagram. It's been going around Instagram in the art community lately. So I'm going to be doing that official prompt list. And the only other rule I set myself is that I am not going to use alcohol markers this year. Last year I allowed myself to use alcohol markers because technically they are an inking supply and they are allowed for Inktober. I just wanted to challenge myself to do this without using those because I feel like I'm actually well, well skilled at using those now. So I don't need to improve more on using alcohol markers to do that for 30 days. I want to improve on just using like pens and stuff and ink bottles and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm going to show you everything in here, but I'm going to try and be quick. I probably will not use everything in this bag for Inktober. This is just a bunch of stuff I can have on hand when I need to search through it instead of looking through all my containers to find stuff. I just wanted to put a bunch of my inking supplies in one spot. So yeah, but if I don't, I'm probably not going to use all of these. So don't like complain in the comments that I have too much shit because I just threw a bunch of stuff in here and I might not use it all. So yeah, the first thing I have is this Uniball Signo gold pen. It has gold ink in it, and yeah. Also, I count pens for this as well, because a lot of people online were counting pens as an inking supply, so that's what I'm going to do as well. I like this one, though, because it is really good. It is, like, as about as vibrant as an actual gold ink bottle, so I really like this pen. I also have this Zig Clean Color Real Brush. This is the only brush pen that I have that still has ink in it. My other two brush pens are completely out of ink and I need to buy more ink for them. So this is the only brush pen I have on hand that I can use for Inktober. I also have this Winsor & Newton ink bottle and this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. And this one, and I might have more somewhere. I'm supposed to have 12 of these, but I don't know where the other ones went at the moment. But I do have a bunch of Winsor & Newton colored inks. And yeah, I know a lot of people don't like it when you... A lot of people are like, oh, you should only do black and white things for Inktober. But I wanted to use my colored inks because I'm not 
as skilled at using colored inks or just inks and bottles as I should. I don't use bottle ink enough, so I just thought I'd allow myself to do these with the colored ink. So yeah. And that's also part of the reason why I'm not using alcohol markers is because if I have all these colored inks, I really shouldn't need alcohol markers for anything. And yeah. Then I have this um, R2 Blast um, gel pen. And it is like has a really sharp tip. And I like to use the black one of these for outlining things. Because they have a black one of the same type of the same type. And I like to use that for outlining things. So I thought I could also maybe use this one to outline some stuff. Like if I was doing a picture that had a lot of blue in it. You know, that kind of stuff. Then I have this the writer dodge gel pen that's in purple. I also thought I could use it for outlining something or just coloring in an area. Because I want to use more gel pens as well and stuff because I don't use gel pens to color as much as I used to. So I want to try and challenge myself to use gel pens to like color pictures and stuff. See how that would work. And yeah. And then I have this monster pen. It's also a gel pen that I thought I could use for inking. It's in black. I have quite a few of these in the bag, but I don't know. Yeah, see I have another two of them here. And yeah. And if you want to know where I got any specific supply, you can just comment down below because I'm too lazy to put every single supply in the description. So if you want to know, you can comment down below and I'll tell you, but yeah. Um, then I have this Faber-Castell Pick Pen Black 199, and this is the brush pen one of it, so yeah. And I know I said that the Zig Clean Color was the only brush pen I had, but this is a brush pen. It's just like a stiff brush pen. So I don't really think of it as a brush pen brush pen, it's more like a brush pen marker. Whereas this one is more like an authentic brush pen, in my opinion. But I have this. And this one isn't waterproof, so I don't know how much I'll be able to use that. Alright, then I have these two Uniball Signo white gel pens that I probably will use for highlights because, yeah. I love the Uniball Signo gel pens, so by the way, like, you should all try them. And then I have this, and it is a Dutch Master uh, thingy, and it is just a pen with, it's supposed to, I got this at the art museum, and it's supposed to look like a paint tube, but it's just a pen that has red ink in it that I thought I could use for outlining, and it looked pretty cool, so I just shoved it in there. And then I have this, it is another R2 Blast. 0.7 mm but this one is in orange and i thought i could also use that for outlining because i also wanted to practice with colored outlining for inktober because i don't do a lot of colored outlining then i have this brush pen which is a prismacolor premier brush pen again it is another brush pen that i think is kind of stiff so it's more like a marker brush pen than it is like an authentic type of brush pen in my opinion so yeah then i have this which is a um, Pilot G207 pen, and I like to use these for outlining sometimes when I have them on hand and nothing else. So I thought I could use this red one for outlining or something like that. Then I have this, which is one of my favorite outlining markers that I have. It is a Tombow outlining marker, and it's like a Tombow brush pen, but again, it's like a marker brush pen because it's not, it's kind of quite a little bit stiff, to be honest, the brush pen part of it, but it is classified as a brush pen. I love to use this. You can get so many varied lines with this mar with this marker and this marker alone. So I will probably use this a lot for Inktober. Yeah. Then I have this, which is a uni ball. I don't know. It's just a uni pen. It doesn't really say on it. It's just a uni pen that I found, and I have it. And I kind of thought I could also use it for outlining if I wanted. Then I have this, which is a Faber Castell Pit Pen Artist. Cold gray three, cold gray, cold gray two three two. Sorry, the lighting is a little bit dim in here. And this is also a brush pen. I thought I could maybe use this for coloring or whatever, because I have a bunch of these, but I don't use them a lot, so I thought I could use this. Yeah. Then I have this, which is a recollection, and it is in the color teal, and it's just a outliner pen in teal that I thought I could maybe use. I don't know. I haven't really decided if I'm going to use all of these or what I'm going to use them for if I do. So I just shoved a bunch in here again. This is just a random owl pen, but it's a pen, so I thought I'd use it. Because I really like to use, like, ballpoint pens and stuff to make ink drawings. That is, like, the funnest thing for me to do. 
I doodle, I doodle in like on ballpoint pen drawings all the time. I do them as doodles like all the time. It looks so good. Yeah. I don't know what brand this pen is, but it is a pastel blue pen. It's like a pastel blue gel pen that I got at Barnes and Noble that I thought I could maybe use to color something or whatever. Then here are two more artist pig pens. This one is a light indigo and this one is a warm gray. Again, I thought I could use them for coloring and stuff. They're both brush pens as well. And then this is another Faber-Castell artist pig pen in ice blue. It's a brush pen again for maybe coloring or something. Then these are, this is a um, Bic Craftsdale oh, 1.6 mm in green that I thought I could maybe use for coloring or outlining. Because I don't use a lot of colored ball pens, ballpoint pens for anything. Yeah. Um, this is just a random Staples pen oh, 1.0. And it's just a random ballpoint pen that I use for writing in school. I thought I could maybe use for this. This is a yummy yummy scented gel pen in black that I thought I could use for coloring because it is a um, sparkly gel pen so I thought that would be cool to have like black sparkles for Inktober because a lot of people do black and white drawings for Inktober but nobody's ever done like sparkly black ink. That's like a cool thing that could spice up your Inktober bruh. And then this is a 0.3 Copic Multiliner in a wine red color. So it's like a red Copic Multiliner, and I thought I could use that because again I want to practice with colored outlining, so I thought that would be cool. This is a, another Recollections pen in emerald green for colored multilining and stuff. Another Faber-Castell Pit pen in, or Pit Artist pen in cold gray 232. Yeah, if I said pit pen or whatever, same thing. You get the idea. Um, this is another Pilot G, G2 0.7 pen, but in pink for colored outlining again. This is just a, I don't know what brand this is, but it's just a random pen I got at the dollar store that is like metallic. And it is a metallic um, gel pen in green for either coloring it. I could use this either for coloring things in or for adding highlights or you know just spicing things up I don't really know yet then I have this jelly roll pen in orange that I thought I could use for outlining because it has quite a sharp well quite a good tip or for coloring I don't know then I have a precise v5 extra fine pilot pen in red I put a bunch of these in here because I used to use them all the time for outlining but now I don't use them as much so I thought this would be a good excuse for that. Then I have another Jelly Roll 06 pen in purple I thought I could use for outlining. Because again, this one has a sharp tip and everything. Or, I shouldn't say sharp, I should say more precise tip. And then I have another Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen Cold Gray VI-235 in brush pen. It's like a gray color. Then I have another Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in black, 199, but this one is a medium tip instead of a brush tip. Then I have another um, Bic Craftsdale 1.6 mm, but in blue, just another blue ballpoint pen. Then I have a Jelly Roll gel pen, and it's in like a blue color for outlining stuff, and I don't know what else, coloring areas I guess. Sorry, these are all over the place. I told you I shoved a lot of random shit in here, and I was not kidding. Okay, so then I have this pen. I don't know the brand name on this pen, but it is in 0.7, and it is blue, and I think this would be another good pen for outlining things. I like to use this one quite a lot for outlining, actually, as it is. It's just another random um, ballpoint pen. It looks like another one of the staple ballpoint pens, but the name rubbed off it, so... I don't know. Another one of the Monster Outliner pens. I had like a set of those. So that's why I have so many. I bought a set of them. Then this is a brush pen. It is a Prismacolor brush pen but in red. So I have like a red Prismacolor brush pen I could use for stuff. Then this is a Copic Multiliner in Sepia and it is in 0.3. Could use that for I don't know what. 
like colored outlining i need to practice with that then i have another recollections outliner in i don't know what color this is but it's a well it's in a brown color but it doesn't specifically say the shade or whatever just a brown one then i have another recollections pen again it doesn't say the color on this one but it is just a blue one then we have another Jelly Roll gel pen. This is like a sparkly black one. Because I thought, again, sparkly black would be an interesting thing to have for Inktober. Then I have another um, one of the Pilot pens, but in black for outlining again. And for doing whatever else. Then I have this pen. I don't know what the brand is because the brand name is all in Japanese. But I found this pen on the floor in the middle of class one day. And it's like a Japanese silver pen. And it has like a sharp tip, so I thought I could use that for either coloring in an area or outlining something, but it is a really nice pen. Like most stuff from Japan, it's really nice. Then we have another Pilot Precise Rolling Ball V5 Extra Fine, but in green. Then we have a random Verizon ballpoint pen that I thought I could also use, because ballpoint pen doodles and stuff. Then I have a brush pen, but it is a Copic Multiliner brush pen. Again, it's a stiffer brush pen, so it's like a brush pen marker rather than an authentic one. And yeah. Then over here, actually, this is quite an interesting supply, but I was at this, like, museum place, and it was, like, about colonial times. And Okay, sorry, the video and well, the other video cut short, so I don't know if I'm going to make this a two-part. Probably, like, always I will, but yeah. And since the video cut short, I thought I would just, like, brighten up the room. But yeah, so I have another Jelly Roll purple pen. I have another Recollections pen, which is in a cherry red color for outlining and stuff. Then I have another Copic, Copic Multiliner in Sepia, but this one is an 0.5. Um, I have a Jelly Roll Sparkly Pink pen because I used this pen last year on one of my drawings. So I thought I would use it again this year because I used it last year, so why not? Then I have another Pilot Precise V5 Extra Fine Pen, but in blue. Then I have a Prismacolor Premier Brown Outliner, but, in, but it's like a brush tip one, so yeah. And the brush tip on this one actually isn't destroyed, because the other like brush tip markers that are quite stiff that I have, for some reason the tips on them are destroyed. I don't know. Then I have a Hollywood Sweets. Um, pen. This is another just random ballpoint pen that I stole from a hotel or whatever. Then I have a, another Recollections pen, but it is in the color Amethyst. And, yeah. Then I have a Universal random ballpoint pen from I don't know where. But all the ballpoint pens are like the same, so, yeah. Then I have a Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen Black 199. But it has a small tip to it, this one does. You see that? It's like a small tip. Yeah, I'm holding a bunch of markers in my hand. But yeah. Then I have another precise rolling ball pilot pen V5 extra fine, but in black. Sorry if I'm going kind of quick. This is quite boring. I'm just reading off marker names. But I don't know. I, I like to do random hauls where I just read off stuff and like be like, here's this thing that I have. That's just me, okay? I like to do that. That's why I like sketchbook tours and stuff. So then I have a random recollections pen, and it is in a lime color green. It's like a light green. Then I have a Micron Pigma 0.5 pen with archival ink, and it is in red. Then I have a Pitt Artist Pen Faber-Castell Black 199, and this is a brush one. This is another brush one. I don't know if I have two different brush ones. I might. Or if that's the only brush one I showed yet. I don't, I don't remember. Then this is a Copic Multiliner in black. 0.3. Another one in the 0.3 black. I have a few of those. Then this is a Prismacolor Pigma. or Pri No, Prismacolor Premier. Um, 0.8. And it's black. Then this is a um, uniball signo and it is like the gold one but it is in silver this time so yeah then this is another faber castell pit artist pen warm gray iv273 and it's like a brush tip one for coloring and stuff i don't know then this is another 
no, this is a 0 0.033 Copic multiliner in black. This is a Copic multiliner in sepia 0 0.05. Then this is a, another Jelly Roll gel pen, but it is in like a sparkly-ish blue color, I believe. That's sparkly blue. Almost done. Sorry if this is a boring video. This is all I could come up with to make for a video since Inktober's coming up and I was very pushed for shit to do. So I was busy so I couldn't do much else. Oh, this one fell. But it is a Papermate Inkjoy 101.0 M and it's just a like um gel pen but it's a blue one. It's like a ballpoint gel pen but blue. Then this is a R2 Rollerball ink, 0.7 again, but it's in black. And this is the color that I said earlier that I like to outline stuff with. So as it is, I use this color to outline stuff with, but I'm going to use it again for Inktober. Then this is a yummy, yummy scented pen, and it's like a blueberry color pen. So it's blue and it's scented blueberries, and it's um sparkly, so yeah. That color just reminded me of my OC mic, that's why I shoved it in here. Then this is a Copic Multiliner in black, and it is a 0.1. I don't know why I need one this small, but if I do, I have it. Then this is a sparkly, a Jelly Roll Metallic, no, this is a Jelly Roll Metallic pen, and it's like a metallic silver, so I thought that might be a cool color. Since, like, silvers and grays are, like, very similar to, like, black shades, so it could contrast if I do like a black and white piece I could add a little bit of silver for contrast and then this is a R2 rollerball again it's another one of the black ones because I have like three of those and then this is a studio series micro line 0.5 45 mm and yeah it's just in purple though but I don't really like these pens that much but I thought I'd try this one because a lot of these pens have like really light color to them so they're almost like, they almost don't show up on paper, that's how terrible they are. But that one actually showed up, so I thought I'd use it. Um, and then this is another Prismacolor Premier um, outliner, but in red. And it is a 0.1. And then this is the last of the stuff in here, so let me just quickly tell you what these are. This is a um, super gel pen, but it is like a neon orange gel pen that I thought I could use to add accents to something or whatever. Then this is a Bic Round Stick M, and it's in blue, and it's just a ballpoint pen, but in blue. And then this is a Recollections um, pen, and it is in the color of Rose Pastel, and it's just a red, no, a pink pen, you know, for color outlining. Then this is a Prismacolor Premier pen in 0.05 for outlining. And then the last thing I have is a Copic Multiliner um sp 0.3 this one is refillable however i kind of broke the nib on it i don't know i always break the nib on the copic multiliner pens i don't know if it's the way i'm